This must be the place. Professor Ubi in his house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching the story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. There were only three things I didn't like about spiders. The way they looked, the way they moved, and the fact that they lived on the same planet as me. This spider was big, mean, and hairy, and definitely not a native of Europe. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. But I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. Bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. I had no time to sit around. The rope was shredded and no possible use to me. Nice couple. It was an oddly designed candle holder with a coil of metal shaped like a snake. Highly artistic, but of very little practical use. The bureau had a sliding lid. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. It was a half bottle of extra strong Mexican tequila. Just what I needed under the circumstances. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. Ew. Disgusting. Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. What looked like a little shriveled wiener lay on the carpet. Thankfully, it was only the worm from the tequila bottle. Well, I wasn't going to eat it. But life had taught me one thing. No matter how unlikely it seems, the strangest objects have their uses. Even tequila worms. 
I'd drunk enough of that. It was a closed drawer. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. It was Nico's bag. It was a stylish little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. It was a needle-sharp dart with a flight of green and yellow feathers. That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end, but this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. I wasn't going to get through those sturdy bars. It was the box that spider had crawled from. I wasn't going to touch the box after that spider had been inside it. The door blocked my only means of escape. The pot contained a key. I guess I had no business reading it, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Lavano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave his telephone number. Labino figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. The cabinet was locked. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. I couldn't think of a use for a burst cylinder. That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. The panties I'd found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. With a well-aimed squirt of a soda fountain, our unshakable hero saved the day. Now it was time to start looking for Nico. I wasn't going to burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety. It was a folded clipping taken from a newspaper. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for Ubier's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was Ubier's bank statement. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico.
Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. The door was locked. I didn't fancy my chances of kicking this door down. I unlocked the door. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. Garçon? He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. The man at the next table looked somehow familiar. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was. Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? My girlfriend. Ah, what it is to be young and in love. Will you share a bottle of wine with me? Hey, listen, I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. So my company isn't good enough for you. Tell me what you make of this note. By years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type with an Oedipus complex. Hey, you got just about everything apart from the ponytail. What do you make of this news cutting? Of niche supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above that. Oh! Total eclipse of the sun. Well, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. What do you make of this dart? Uh, I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. The poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Apparently, he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. It was a small silver flask from which the man was topping up his glass. Hey, you. Qua, I'd like a cup of coffee if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. Un café. Thanks. Look at this. A poison dart. Now ah, we. Oui. Sure. It's the real thing. Knocked my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. 
Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and a watertight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know a guy called André Lobineau? Oui, I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No, I have not seen him today. What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me, I didn't sell it to him. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, surely. I wouldn't normally call you. But Nico's in trouble, Andre. Deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her. And he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Ubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh my god, you mean I could be in danger too? Take a look at this, Andre. It's a bank statement? Yeah. Professor Oubier's account. Five large cash withdrawals in the space of three days. All from an automatic teller in Marseille. Suspicious, isn't it? You're even more crazy than you were before. What can you tell me about this pot? Mm, South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank. The Glees Gallery. What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? Does UBA employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. You've never been to his house? I thought you guys were pals. Fellow academics, Georgie. It's not quite the same thing. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. Tell me about your friend Ubier. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Where did Nico get the stone? It was sent to her. From where? Who? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. See you later. 
goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kala. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. You need anything else? There was nothing I wanted to say to him. I couldn't snatch the man's flask while he was looking. It was too hot to sit inside the cafe. It was too hot to... What's that you're drinking? It's wine. The waiter said it's absinthe. That fool wouldn't know Pierno from Catspies. I'm trying to find my girlfriend. She's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Yeah. It was our first day back together after many months. That's too bad. My god, that's depressing. The man was still looking. Excuse me. What? I've been looking forward to seeing my girl, but she wanted to rush off to see some professor. I see. And you think she's having an affair with this professor? Look, uh, forget it. It doesn't matter. Ever heard of Carol Climax, the movie star? Yes, but I don't care for the kind of movie she's made. It's smut like that which has caused the moral decline of the Western world. Is it true that Carol Climax was murdered by her husband? First I heard of it. I thought she'd just retired. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe, a highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. Now I had another lead. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. The Glees Gallery had style and class, but very few customers. The Wasteland. Too minimalistic for too much money. The Wasteland. Too minimalistic for too much money. I couldn't believe it. The pots were marked at 5,000 francs each. As far as I could tell, the pots were almost identical to the one I'd found in Ubier's house. At that price, I wasn't going anywhere near those pots. The girls were in a world of their own. Hi, girls. <laughs> What's the joke? Anata wa kirete desne. Okay, fine. If I wanted to be laughed at, there was always Nico. I didn't think much of any of these artifacts. 
looked like a witch and a headless bust. I had seen better. The wasteland. The pots were protected by a glass case. Pots, pots, and more pots, all hugely expensive. Rectangles in a desolate landscape, highly cubist. Rectangles. He was a pear-shaped guy with a fine display of multiple chins. Spheres in a barren waste. Oh, very profound. I could see a pattern emerging in this artist's work. Spheres in a barren waste. The glass stopped me from picking up the exhibits. Pots, pots, and more pots, all hugely expensive. It was a machine for reading credit cards. Pots. He looked like an older version of Labano. The same supercilious expression, the same disdain in his eyes, and the same damned ponytail. The way that guy was gripping the glass, I'd need a wrench to get away from him. Are you Mr. Glees, the owner? Good God, no. Uh, then I guess that must be him over there, right? Your powers of deductive reasoning astound me. Would you give me your opinion on this pot, sir? Hmm. Yes. Very rapouche. Rapouche? Hideous. What the hell do you think you're doing? You smashed my pot! Certainly, it was not only worthless, it was ugly and offensive. To you, maybe. Believe me, I was doing you a favor. What's that you're drinking? I'm not sure, but I have a suspicion it might be urine. Glees can't expect a favorable criticism of his gallery when he serves this muck. That pot you smashed belonged to Professor Oubier. Did it really? I thought the man had more taste. What's the difference between my pot and all those other pots? Yours is broken. Why, you smug, pompous sloth. Sticks and stones, dear boy, sticks and stones. I wasn't going to waste any more breath talking to that pompous blimp. Maybe I could turn the situation to my advantage, and at the same time, get my revenge. The pot had smashed into too many pieces to retrieve. A valuable relic of an ancient civilization lay smashed on the floor. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Certainly, sir. I'd be most happy to oblige. You're English? These days, one prefers to think of oneself as European. Uh, sure. Whatever you say. And how precisely may one assist you, sir? I found this news story referring to a total eclipse of the sun. Really, sir? Well, well, fascinating. There is a gentleman over there who seems to be enjoying your wine. I can't think why. It was very cheap. I have some questions I'd like to ask about those pots. The Mexican collection? Uh, certainly, sir. Where did you get them from? Mexico, of course. I think, sir, we'll find the price extremely reasonable. Hey, I'm not interested in buying them. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, you'll excuse me. Do you get many Central American Indians in here? Uh, no, sir. Uh, this is Paris. Uh, Central America is several thousand kilometers southwest of here, straight across the Atlantic Ocean and turn left. You can't miss it. Well, as it happens, I saw some Central American Indians this very morning. Tourists, sir. Paris is full of them at this time of year. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Of course. His name is synonymous with Mayan art. A number of these artifacts were supplied by Oubier himself. I suppose you have an import license for these relics? Of course. Well, that's not my problem, sir. The professor arranges all the shipping. We simply collect the items from the docks. Could you tell me which docks Professor Oubier uses to import the artifacts? Good God, no. I can't possibly reveal my commercial secrets. Do you believe the story that Oubier murdered his wife? If it was true, who could blame him? She was an opportunist tramp. 
Well, that's what I heard. Have you seen any of Ubier's wife's films? Only one. Believe me, I was appalled, shocked, disgusted, and repulsed. Well, you sure got your money's worth. Last time I went to the movies, I wasn't even titillated. What I really wanted to ask you about was a black stone. A black stone? Yeah, it's a Mayan artifact, about as big as my hand. No, sir, one doesn't get much call for black stones. If it's Mayan artifacts you're interested in, I have some rather exquisite pots. And so did I, until that slob smashed it. I splashed a little absinthe into the glass and hoped he wouldn't notice the change of color. Did you put something in my drink? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, what do you think? Well, it's certainly an improvement over Gleaser's wine. In fact, I could grow to like it. Allow me. I had no possible use for a credit card reader. There was nothing in the case but styrofoam packing, but pasted on the side was the remains of a label. Underneath the logo of a flying bird were the words Condor Transglobal Mars. The rest of the label was missing. It was beginning to make sense. Ubier had organized Nico's abduction. Ubier withdrew money from Marseille. Ubier was connected with Transglobal, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Transglobal label had once read. Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train. It was almost dawn when I arrived in Marseille. I traced Condor Transglobal to a desolate dockside. It was a mean-looking guard dog. Hi there. Hey. How long have you been watching me? I wasn't watching. You were looking. Oh, well, yeah, but I wasn't watching. What'd you want? Do you know what time it is? No, I don't wear a watch. As my dad used to say, I'm not into time, man. Well, you're too early. Take a look at this letter. That's sick. Did you write it? Oh, no. No, it's a letter from my girlfriend's admirer. If I was you, I'd smack him in the mouth. Well, that's not my style, but thanks for the advice. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, pal, what is it? A poison dart used for hunting. What would you hunt with that? Mice? No, monkeys and stuff. The tip is dipped in poison. Hey, what you got against monkeys? I love monkeys. I was just using them as an example. Well, don't. What's cooking? Beans. 
You know, a man can live on nothing but beans. Not this one. Don't you ever get tired of eating beans? Sure I do. What do you take me for? And what's the alternative? Peas. I can't eat them too often, though. They play hell with my digestion. Have you ever considered changing your diet? What's wrong with beans and beer? You need me to tell you? You're pumping out enough methane here to fill a dirigible. Have you ever heard of Professor Oubier? Me? None of my friends are professors or anything like that. I have these very exotic panties. Take them away, you pervert! I'm looking for a young woman. At the docks? What kind of woman do you have in mind? You don't understand. It's my girlfriend I'm trying to find. Well, I ain't seen her. And you should tell her. The docks ain't no place for a young lady. They're dirty and they're dangerous. I'm certain my girlfriend was brought here when she was abducted. What? Your girl was kidnapped? Yeah. Struck down by an Indian with a poison dart. Like the one you showed me? The very same. I could tell he didn't believe me. Ever heard of Condor Transglobal? Sure. They have a warehouse here. Well, could I take a look? Not until after the holidays. Come back in a month. I have to make a delivery to Condor Transglobal. Where's your rig? Uh, about half a mile down the road. And you walked here? Jeez. Are you some kind of nut? Nah, it was easy. I just put one foot in front of the other. Are you going to let me make my delivery? Not without the paperwork. You get the papers, you make your delivery, and I get a fat backhander. I was getting nowhere with the story about being a trucker. Do you know what kind of business Condor's involved in? I'll pay you guys a day. Their business is not mine. Does that dog belong to you? Nah, he comes with the job. I just feed him every now and then. More then than now, I'd say. What's the dog's name? Twenty. It's unusual for a dog. It's his registration number. Security dog number twenty. That animal doesn't seem too hot for a guard dog. No? You haven't seen him in action. It doesn't look like he has the energy to wag his tail. Just like my wife. She's like a slug in a coma until she's annoyed. Then, she's like a tiger with a rat up its ass. Sweet. What time is it, anyhow? The big hand's on the floor. Why aren't you in bed? I can explain everything. Never mind, I ain't that interested. What time do you open the gates? Seven. Do you mind if I hang out here till the docks open? Please yourself, but you'll have a long wait. It's Sunday, and tomorrow is the start of the national holiday. Everything is closed for a month. Well, wouldn't you just know it? I gotta go now, but I'll be back. Can't wait. Hey, 20. The gates were fastened with a heavy-duty padlock. The stick had a hook on one end. I figured it was a boat hook for hooking boats. I just knew that boat hook would be useful for something. As for the bottom, even if I couldn't find a use for it, I'd clean up the dock. The bottle was half filled with water. Maybe it would cool the cone down enough to touch it.
Now I could see into the pipe which formed the chimney. Hmm. The bottle had blocked the chimney, and the hut was filling up with smoke. Something wrong? Something wrong? I nearly took to death. Why don't you get some air? Take a long walk along the pier. I could stay here and watch the gate. Oh no. You'd be through that gate as soon as my back was turned. With that crazy dog around? Someday I hope to have kids. Hey, Twenty. Hey, don't come at the dog. Hey, Twenty. Are you sure you'll be all right? Yeah, the smoke is clearing already. The packet was full of dog biscuits. Someone had once told me a piece of coal brought you luck. Who was I to argue with irrational superstition? Hey, 20. Come and get it, boy. I felt a slight twinge of conscience as I prepared to give the dog a dunking. It soon passed. As I'd expected, the dog could swim like a, well, like a dog. The sign looked as if it was firmly attached to the wall. Anyway, I didn't really want it as a souvenir. It read Pont de Nord, Fine Wine Producers. I didn't recognize the label. A sturdy chain and padlock hung around the door handles. This sign also looked firmly attached to the wall. It read Condor Trans Global. I'd come to the right place. Now all I had to do was get inside. That door seemed to be the only way into the warehouse. The din must have drowned out the sound of my knocking. The grill opened from the inside. There was a little grill set into the door. Maybe there was a way in up there.
That did the trick. The fan clunked and shorted out as its blades were mashed by the boat hook. Hey, you make any more noise, I break your arms. That bully needed to be taught a lesson. Garzak's already mad because we didn't get the stone. You give me any trouble, I'll tell him it was all your fault. Karzak? That must be his boss. Shipping company, isn't it? I don't like pizza. Oh, come on. Everyone likes pizza. Maybe he was allergic to mozzarella. Hey, what now? Look, this pizza's been paid for. You might as well take it. I told you, I don't like pizza. Not even with extra olives? I hate them. Olives are the devil's butt nuggets. If you know what's good for you, you'll open this door. What if I go? I'll kick your head in. Okay, I'll come out in three. Among the paperwork which adorned the notice board was something which caught my eye. It was a delivery note from Condor Transglobal, and the address was Caramonte City. There was a notice board beside the desk with an assortment of paperwork on it. A filing cabinet. It was locked. The little brass key didn't fit the lock. The room was filled with transglobal crates. All the crates were firmly sealed. Whoa! Don't shoot! The little guy had a blowpipe. That confirmed my suspicions about what had happened to Nico. I waited for him to shoot me, but it didn't happen. Instead, he seemed to want to tell me something. Uh, what? What do you want? Uh, uh, he seemed excited, almost desperate. What did he want so bad? Hi. Uh, I'm not going to hurt you. Caramonte. Is that where you're from? Caramonte City? 
Cuaramonte, Cuaramonte. Okay, okay. What does this key unlock? Huh? You're manacled. Who did this? That big thug? I'm gonna set you free, okay? Hey, come back here! The little guy had gone to ground amongst the stack of crates. Just in time. Interrupting the beam of light kept the doors from closing and stopped anyone from using the elevator. But what now? There. That would keep the doors from closing. Nothing happened. That was probably because the elevator was already on this floor. There was an arc shaped scratch on the floor, as if a door had been opened in the nearby wall. My fingers traced the outline of a secret door in the wall. Then I found a small round stud, which was set flush to the surrounding wooden panel. Just as I hoped, a secret room. Nico! Lucky you don't have a mustache. Thank God it's you, Georges. How did you find me? I'll explain later. We have to get out of here. Where's Pablo, the big guy? Out cold. Too much wine doesn't agree with him. Are you okay? Of course I'm not okay. Untie me this instant. There. How are you feeling? Oh, thanks, Georges. How on earth did you find me? I knew Oubier had been in Marseille. But never mind about me. How about you tell me exactly what's going on, starting with that Mayan stone? I picked it up from one of Cossack's men in Paris. I was expecting a consignment of narcotics. Drugs? Yes. The proof I needed to expose Cossack's smuggling operation. I'd set it up to act as his courier, and once I had the proof, I planned to go straight to Inspector Mu. But instead of the dope I'd expected, they sent me that stone instead. And to find out more, I called Professor Oubier, who invited me to his mansion. At least, I thought it was Oubier. I don't get it. If Karzak's business is drugs, why is he so desperate to get his hands on that stone? Maybe it has some significance to the local people in Central America. Could be Kazakh's means of getting them to work for him. Anyway, we've got to get out of here. Nico, wait! It was a flint carving of a grotesque figure with large evil eyes. We 
We can't use the elevator. If that thug Pablo is recovered, he'll be waiting for us. We've got to do something. Where does that door lead to? I'm not sure. Have you any idea who this little statue is supposed to be? I'm not very well acquainted with Mayan deities, Georges. But whatever his name, he sure is ugly. Look, the little guy downstairs was chained up with these. That must have been Pablo's doing. I don't blame him, though. That little guy is dangerous. You're still sore about that poison dart? Of course I'm sore. I found these in your bag. Oh, they were a gift. I know, I read the note. God knows what was going through Andre's mind. I think that's quite plain enough. Do you recognize this? Is that the dart which knocked me out? That's right. I kept it as a souvenir. Did that Indian guy mistreat you? If you forget about the abduction, verbal threats and bondage, no. But what about the little guy? I don't think he knows where he is or what he's doing here. The big guy, Pablo, he brought Titipoco from the jungle. Titi what? Titipoco. That's what I heard Pablo call the dwarf. Did I hear you refer to Inspector Moon? Yes, you remember him? Well, of course I do. But I thought he was dead. Oh no, he reappeared after the broken suitcase had blown over. When he found out who was in with the Neo Templars, he went into hiding. Moon knew more than was good for him. Does he know about our involvement with the case? If he does, he's not telling. Still, he got a sudden promotion. Did you know Oubier's wife was a film star? No, I didn't know he was married. What happened to her? She died. In mysterious circumstances, apparently. How mysterious? I heard she was murdered. Possibly by Ubier himself. A murderer, huh? André said he was something of a celebrity. Tell me about this Karzak guy. Well, I saw him for only a few minutes, but he frightened me. I got the impression that Pablo was nervous when he was around too. His eyes, they're like a wild animal's, like a tiger. That's what scared me most about him. He looked so unpredictable and dangerous. Okay. Tell me what you know about Condor. Condor Transglobal exports Aztec and Mayan relics from Central America to Europe. But that's just a cover for the real business. Drug smuggling. What proof do you have? Nothing yet. Do you know where Condor is based? In Central America. A place called Cuaramonte. I saw that name on a docket downstairs. Hopefully, the tape would prevent those doors from closing and stop the Indian from being able to call the elevator. to whoever had discovered the power of hydraulics. What on earth are you doing? Trying to raise the statue so I can hook it to that pulley. Is that really going to help us? I like to keep myself occupied in times of stress.
It was too heavy for me to move on my own. Could you give me a hand to push this statue? What for? This, my dear, is our passport to freedom. If you say so, dear. Okay, push! <laughs> Great teamwork. Nice to be working with you again, Mr. Stobart. I thought about hanging from the cable with my bare hands, but it was too far to the other end of the cable to escape that way. Nico, I have a great idea. Josh, where have you been? Never mind that. Do you have the Mayan stone? Maybe I have, but uh... Don't argue, Andre. Give the stone to Josh. Well, of course. If you say so, Nicole. Thank you so much, Andre. Josh, he told me you'd been kidnapped, my dear. I'm glad to see he was mistaken. Oh, but it was true. If it hadn't been for Josh. I wouldn't be here now. That's not finished yet. Karzak's thugs will be back for that stone, you can bet. The best lead that we have is Coromonte City. Coromonte? It's in Central America. That's where Ubier gets his artifacts. That's all we needed to know. Come on, Georges. Coromonte, the traveler's rear entrance to Central America. Well, that's how it was translated in the brochure. We didn't know what we were looking for but the offices of Condor Transglobal seemed a good place to start. Hey, it's market day. I don't see any cabs. Let's ask someone how to get to Cuaramonte City. Okay, keep your eyes peeled for any sign of Condor Transglobal. What, uh, what, what was that? It's a lump of lucky coal. A ca, ca, coal? I, I would have, uh, I would have preferred, uh, chocolate. Uh, any, any, uh, flavor, so long as it, uh, hasn't got, uh, uh mar marzipan in it. God, I, I, I hate, uh, marzipan. You can talk. I, I mean, you're a talking goat. C keep, keep your voice down. The, the, this is, is between you and me, right? Well, I guess so. Now, I, 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 I mean it. You, 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 you tell anyone you've spoken to me, and, and, and you'll be cursed. <laughs> now, I like most animals, but experience had made me wary of goats, and cats, and dogs, 